This is Dino Dan from Cypress, California, and you're watching the Barbecue Central Show. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How is long? You have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what? What? What seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? We ate 50 for wieners. So listen, Laverne, it's shit face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. It's the Barbecue Central Show, where we talk about Barbecue Central Show things, your live fire fun and frivolity show. That is found living it on Tuesdays. We are so, we are so, or in English, we are also recording. And it will go up for podcast on Wednesday and Thursday, our number one and two, respectively. Still to come on this show this evening. Sam, the cooking guy, will be in in about 12 to 13 minutes from now. And then closing the show, Laura Paul from Smithfield, and we'll be announcing the Smithfield Grant recipients. We'll also be talking about the Smithfield Committed Cooks program. If you want to take part in that, smokinwithsmithfield.com is the website, so check that out. And I'm happy to have you join there and get the cast of goodies for like 20 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever it is. Don't forget, you can follow me socially at BBQ Central Show on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and Snapchat. Slash BBQ Central Show on Facebook and Twitch for video feeds and your last video feed option slash RD Rempy on YouTube. Coming up on the best moments of the BBQ Central Show in 10 minutes or less this Friday... Episode 162. I got to tell you right now, if you haven't listened to one episode of the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less, make this your first one. Do me the favor and make this the first one that you listen to. Because back in January of 2013, January 22nd of 2013 to be exact, a guy by the name of Harry Sue from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue was on my show, and we talked in depth about cooking chicken. We also talked about internal finish temperatures of cooking chicken. Back then, Harry brought up that he was cooking chicken to an internal temperature of 145 degrees, which, of course, is pinging your brain right now. That's much less than the FDA recommends at 165. Of course, it was all the rage back then in 23. Harry Sue is cooking chicken to 140. He's killing everybody. It was all the rage back then. Still really good to get reacquainted with this topic if you're not familiar with it. It was really fun back then. It holds up eight years later. I just did a preview with it the other day or uh, earlier this afternoon. And remember this, if you're immediately and feverishly typing an email out going, Terry Sue cooking chicken to 145, that's absolutely dangerous. It's irresponsible. But here's what you have to take into consideration. Here's what he talks about as we were having our chat eight years ago. Actually, a little more than eight years ago. It's internal temperature and time holding it at that temperature. So where 165 degrees is your, let's say, uh, auto kill on all the nasties, everything still dies at 145 degrees, except it's not instantaneous. So as he says in the best of portion, 145, but I hold it for X amount of time 
which then gives me the same result as it would at one four, uh, at one sixty five. But the mouth feel and the tenderness and all that other stuff. That's a whole different monster at 145 than at 165. So as I said, if you've never heard of Best Moments, if this is the one that you want to get introduced to, then you can go back and listen to all the other 161 episodes that have currently been up there, thanks to my pal John from Michigan, the embedded correspondent. What can I tell you? Let me remind you, by the way, that if there is a segment or guest that you would like to hear on a upcoming best of, just shoot John an email, John at the BBQ Central Show.com, and that's J O N. A lot of you have been asking me if this is where I will jump in on the Mo Quezon versus Des Moines, Iowa barbecue joints situation that has been going on the last handful of days. Mo is in the beginning process of opening a barbecue restaurant and took a few seconds to give an interview to the Des Moines Register or whatever it is. Within the minutes of that interview, taking shots at a few local Des Moines, Iowa barbecue restaurants, namely Jethro's Barbecue, which he said was completely trash. What? I'm sorry, garbage, I believe was his exact quote. He also took a shot at Iowa Smoky D's Barbecue. Of course, that's Darren Worf's place. Uh, I'm not jumping in at this point simply because Mo is not up and running yet. He's not up and running yet. You are not the fire. Not up and running. A barbecue restaurant isn't just about cooking. It's really a lot about running the business of the business. Would I have gone out of my way to take shots before my doors are even open? Me? No, I personally wouldn't. But let's see how it plays out over the next few weeks, over the next few months, and then we can have a better sample size to evaluate. Maybe I'll see if Darren and Mo will come on and do a show in the next few weeks and have fun with each other. I'll put the I'll put the invite out there. I don't know if we would get both of them. I would hazard a guess that we would get one or the other. Maybe not both, but you never know. They're competitors, all in the same rate. And then there's this. Uh I don't know what I did to Amazon. I don't know what I did to get YouTube angry at me years ago either. That's a different story. I had a link at the top of my show website that said Amazon on it. It would send you to the home page for Amazon if you shop during the visit. There was a code that was embedded to give the show website a referral kickback if you bought something. All those whopping 20s and 30s of dollars that it generated each year, I sunk back into the production of the show for various expenses and upgrades. However, three months ago, I got an email saying that my account had been terminated immediately. Because I was in violation of the Amazon Associates Agreement. And that how the rules are, Amazon can turn you off without any specific reason. So I went through the said agreement, found I was not doing anything against the agreement, filed my appeal as it said I had the opportunity to do so. Well, I got my appeal decision on this past Thursday morning. The result, still banned. Just like on YouTube, still banned. Not on the YouTube that you're watching me on, but my original YouTube channel, still banned. You know, what the hell is going on here? It cited my continued violation of the associate's agreement and that that, again, they can pick and choose who they want to do business with and who they can tell to fuck off when it comes to their program. I have thoroughly researched the rules of this program. I have not been in violation of any of these rules of these programs. Hell, the only thing I really had was that link on the top of my website that sent people to Amazon. I mean, what, my traffic isn't good enough for you, Amazon? You don't want my prospects to peruse your web pages and potentially buy something? Making you money 
making me a little bit of money? Is it beyond frustrating? Yes. But I'm not chasing it any further. I will relent and not have the Amazon link at the top of my page. I didn't have any any of those kooky stores or anything like that. Just the link at the top of my page. But I have to take it off. Now it's out. Trust me, not having that link on the top of the uh, web page now will probably cause me to have to move out into the street because I can't afford my life without that Amazon money. My question to you that have the valid associates agreement, have you run into anything like this before? And if you have, how did you resolve it in your favor? If you got it resolved in your favor, are you like me out on the street, hit the bricks, pal, and beat it because you are going out? Lastly, screw you, Amazon, and fuck you, YouTube. Those two websites are the Jack Nicholas and the Kent DeSormo of the Internet. I've had it with Amazon. I've had it with YouTube. What I haven't had it with yet... Southside Market, because their sausage is unbelievable. The sausage slammers, the jalapeno and cheddar. Love it. Established in 1882. The oldest barbecue joint in Texas, run by the same family for three generations. Premium Central Texas barbecue meats are slow smoked over real wood, shipping, distributing, and manufacturing sausages for companies across the U.S., from food trucks to multi chain restaurants. Southside sausage can be on your menu as well. All meats are processed in the on-site USDA inspected facility. A trusted partner with a focus on quality and authenticity. Wholesale options are available. Why, yes, sir, they are. Shipping nationwide via the FedEx. Food service distribution through Cisco, U.S. Food, and Martin Foods, just to name a few. Co-packaging capable from research and development to package completion. They can follow your recipe or help you into something brand new. Why not? Private label opportunities are also available. You can visit southsidemarket.com to stock up. 10% off all online orders all the time. Tell all your friends and neighbors. BBQ Central at checkout. That's the promo code BBQ Central. All one word in lowercase for 10% off your entire online order each and every time at southsidemarket.com. That's southsidemarket.com. Who doesn't want to save 10%? I want to save 10%. Again, get the sausage slammer. Get 10 sausage slammers. Get the jalapeno cheddar. Oh, and get the hot guts. What? The hot guts. The beef sausage. That's the thing they're most known for. You got to get great. All right, we are back with Sam the Cooking Guy. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the number one most downloaded barbecue and grilling podcast anywhere. The Barbecue Central Show. Visits from a killer hog, a cooking guy, a man named Meathead, the author of Barbecue Bible, a grill girl, a bristly barbecue journalist, and the male feasance of the barbecue world known as the Embedded Correspondence. Only found right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Hey, this portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet currently available in two sizes a host of accessories to complete your pit barrel cooking experience whether you're a beginner or professional definitely a cooker you want to add to the arsenal visit pitbarrelcooker.com and tell them the barbecue central show sent you my next guest blowing it up on youtube with over 2.54 million subscribers as of earlier this afternoon You can watch three videos per week that he's pumping out, along with Max and Chance in production. So let's go ahead and race at the hotline 
And welcome back, Sam the Cooking Guy. Hey, Sam. Greg, how are you? I'm fine, and welcome how back. How do I sound? You sound great. Thank, Thank you, you for being right do on I the mic. Right on the mic. Yeah. I don't know what happened. What do you? What? Look, I mean, you know, when people aren't, when this isn't your main thing, and then you have the microphone in front of you, you know, people just have a tendency to kind of duck and dodge. A meathead is a, is a classic example of it. And, uh, you know, it's just, I'm OCD about it. So, uh, you know, that's what, and I, I pay attention bit, to it. I felt it. a bit chastised. Well, I'm, uh, I, it was like, a reminder. Meathead, doesn't, isn't Meathead basically the low rider of microphone users? Isn't he like this? Uh, well, I mean, typically he is. But then I last time he was on, I said, hey, do me a favor. Uh, put that mic arm so that the, uh -oh. he's got a sweet spot on his mic. I said, this is where it is. Yeah, Make sure that thing well. is just in front of your face every single time so we can hear the good Meathead. Because as soon as he gets away from it, then it sounds like he's got the computer microphone back on and then what's good of having a outside microphone right exactly who's jordan jones a uh, jordan jones is a youtuber all right a tiktoker oh an instagrammer a uh, a facebooker a tiktoker did i say tiktoker she has uh, just between tiktok and uh, instagram yes Almost 17 million what? Uh, people follow. No way. And she's 20. 20. <laughs> Wait, two, uh, let me say that again. 20. Two zero. So is she, did she get fame originally from TikTok and then went across platforms or YouTube first? Like where, where did she make her bones? As no, uh, well, she, she's a singer, performer. I don't think Did she have a TikTok hit song? Came First, uh, I am not listening to very many 20 year old hit songs. Liar. So who do I listen to? Go ahead, <laughs> name something. I don't you know even know do. 20. Is Drake 20 I years almost old? Never, I almost never listen to music. I listen to, when I have uh, time to listen, I listen to conversation. Uh -huh. I watch uh, and l I listen to you. Yes, that's the and best I'm a way, right? Fan as you are, as I mean, the best way. Yeah. Th this is what I think, and only because probably this is how the show the show was originally born was just audio only. Uh, it was mm. on uh, <laughs> internet radio, whatever the hell that was back 13 years ago when we started this thing. By the way, uh, next week, wait, what are we at? Second, in five days from now, I'll be celebrating the beginning of my uh, 13th year of live shows. Holy, you can believe it. God. Wow. Um, notwithstanding that, I think the best way to consume this show, and there's a lot of people watching now through the video because people are visual and they like the whole voyeur situation, but I find that when I watch the show, if I listen to the same show in the car on the way to work, it's a much better show. I don't know if it's just an aversion to watching me or the fact that I never wanted to have a video component and I only wanted to just have audio yeah. so people could do theater of the mind, but I find it much more entertaining on podcasts than I do watching it. You know, I, the only embedded correspondent that I have a mental picture of is, uh, Shiding. Yeah. And that's because, uh, I've met him. The other ones I have no idea because I listen, I don't watch, uh, this. I was talking to uh wall chef today. We're talking about something. And I said, you know, I don't watch Greg's show. I listen to Greg's show. And I'm, I'm very happy doing it. Yes. I really am. I encourage it. I really am. Yeah. Well, of course you do. Is it? Uh, I, I, and I encourage it, too. And I'll tell you this, and I'm not saying this to kiss your ass no. or anything. The more I listen, the more I like it. The more I listen, the more I learn. The more I listen, the more I now start to go uh, Google the people that you've had on. Oh, good. We had that conversation with... Uh, was it Kevin Riches? Uh, Derek Riches. Derek Riches. Yeah. I I was uh I was taken with his uh his knowledge. Yeah. I really was. I it was it, it was it's really interesting. The pellet thing, the the B and B pellet uh, con uh, wood charcoal conversation the other day. I really enjoyed that. Good. So I think I'm becoming a barbecue nerd. I'm not sure, but I might be. Yeah, I think you might be more than you even know it. 
I think so. Yeah. I mean, you're the one that said to me, you don't realize it, my friend, but you have a live fire cooking show. <laughs> but more or less, more did. live fire than not. Uh, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. You have a new grinder, meat grinder, showcased in yeah. your sal. Well, at least showcased yeah, to me yeah. for the first time in your Salisbury steak episode, which is a question that I'll yeah. ask you about all on its own independently. Uh, give me some, give me some Sam the Cooking Guy feedback on this uh, meat grinder. I wish I could remember what model it was. I did, I, I, you know, when I go on Amazon looking for something, or I. I I spend some time. I uh, I read reviews, and uh, and I bought a grinder. What I had previous to this was a plastic attachment that went on the the front end of my KitchenAid uh, stand mixer, and the thing absolutely just went. Oh, it no. just broke. The little metal disc that shears off the meat as it spins around. One of the four pieces of it just snapped. It was just a piece. It was a piece of junk. So, so I went looking for one. We used this thing the other day, and the first time I really turned it on was when I plugged it in, getting ready to grind this meat <laughs> for the burger that I think was 50% tri-tip and 50% short rib. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, maybe one of, the, one of the best blends I've ever put together. It was so delicious. And if, you're, if your viewers aren't grinding their own, they're missing out because it's hard to – Get these combinations just by buying the stuff already ground. You can't find ground tri-tip or short rib. A chuck, of course, but you want to do something interesting, it's hard to do it without a grinder. So anyway, we set this thing up. I turn it on. It's an all metal housing now for the whole grinding attachment part. There is so much power in this damn thing. You know, you put a piece of meat in it, and it just goes, it's like it's like a... a it's like a one of those massive straight down slides at a water park. It came out so fast. Hmm. I was very impressed with it. It was way under. I mean, way under. It was under a hundred dollars. It might have been eighty, eighty five, or something, something like that. I think this is an Amazon purchase. I whole, yeah, I wholeheartedly endorse uh, getting yourself a grinder if you want to take your your burger game. To the next level, and I hate saying that. I didn't just can't. I'm not. I couldn't grab it any other words in my mouth or in my brain. You need to do that. <laughs> Fantastic. We have a triple blend at our Sandburgers restaurants, and every time I take a bite, I'm like, "Holy shit!" I mean, it makes all the difference in the world. It made all yep. the difference in the world. No doubt. Really, if I leave any, if I leave your listeners and or your viewers tonight with anything, and you're fans of burgers, I would tell you get yourself a meat grinder. Mm. You really should. All right. Well, uh, go watch the Salisbury steak episode that was released last week, and get the the brand of whatever it is because you turned that thing on. It scared the shit out of me. The minute you turned it on, I was like, man, I hope scared he doesn't the shit out of us. put his hand down there because he's gonna have. Sam Burger uh, in the literal oh. sense. I mean, it was going to take your hand off. So Jeez. that would be the thing that <laughs> I would funny. get. I mean, there's no doubt. And just to, you know, to uh, I rep uh, at the risk of repeating myself, if you go and you watch the episode, the only other times I've had Salisbury steak in my life, I thought they were the worst pieces of shit ever and would never have one. This thing was fantastic. Think about many super tender, moist, luxurious mini meatloaves in this incredibly intense, gorgeous mushroom gravy. What could and you have you used make our outside of in the episode? You put a was it a Guinness in there for like liquid as part of the gravy? Yeah. What can I use outside of that? Like just yeah, beef you stock could, you or could what? Just, I, I would use beef stock, but I think I would amp it up an extra, you know, 30, 40, maybe even 50%. Hmm. Just use extra, extra. And as I asked you the other day, if you use beef tallow, yeah, I use beef tallow yeah. to sear these, uh, these patties before all the, you know, the mushroom part happens. Have you had a conversation about beef tallow with your audience? Uh, I had... 
nothing ongoing. I had a guy from Texas, uh, Tim McKeska, on who was yeah. like a sausage king, and he yeah. went through the process of making beef tallow yeah. at home. You're missing out if you're just tossing away the beef fat, and he did it. But we haven't talked about use or anything like that. No. So think it. So it's it's literally as simple as just rendered beef fat, but they sell it now in a store in the stores in a jar. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you're gonna you're gonna sear a steak. You're gonna you know uh, make some mushrooms to go on top of a burger or some onions or something. A spoonful of this instead of oil or butter is a game changer because. You get the lubrication that you need to cook whatever it is you, you got in the pan, but with this extra flavor, and you just smell it, and you you'll fall in love. <laughs> just go look for beef tallow in a jar. Start using it. You'll be very surprised at how it really changes your food game. Where I find it in my giant eagle, which is around the you know the tri-state area, I think it has a stronghold on the grocery store chains out here. It's in yeah. the oil aisle. Go so ahead. we have the beef tallow like you have. Yeah. We also have pork and we also have yeah. chicken. Yeah, they have that here too. Yes. And um, I, I, this is the only tallow that I have. Let me just hold it. Here's, here's my picture. Here's my picture that I sent you and said. Yeah. Right there. Epic beef tallow. You use that. Yeah. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not pimping that brand. Yeah. Uh, I have no reason to. It's the That's same the one in my grocery store. I think it's probably readily available everywhere. It seems it is. So just go, just go look for it. Honestly, just go look for it. Now, it's crazy. In full disclosure, while oh, I would boy. tend to take a dump on some of the things that you would take a dump on, for instance, this Salisbury okay, steak. You know that you have had uh, two yes, other times yes. in your life in probably industrial settings. Yes, yes. For some reason, yes. Yeah. You go to the frozen aisle in the grocery store and you find Encore Salisbury steaks. I can eat the ass end out of those Salisbury. Steaks. I don't know why I love them so much. I have a feeling. Really, there's a nostalgia thing. Like when my dad was out of town on business, uh, we would get like. Uh, you know, cream dried beef on toast or hamburger helper mac and cheese or the uh, yeah. Salisbury steak. But even through college, I would eat it. And every now and again, we'll just have it like for fun. But God, I don't know. It's like spongy meat and a pretty terrible gravy. And I love it. I hate to say it, but I love uh, it. You know what? Look, I no, no, don't hate to say it. We all have those things that guilty we like. pleasure. It's a guilty pleasure for me back in the day. And, and when I say back in the day, sadly, I'm now referring to like um, uh, 2019, um, a Chinese buffet, not even a good Chinese buffet restaurant could be the worst, shittiest Chinese buffet ever. But for me, ah, that neon, neon, uh, uh, orange, orange chicken, the, Giant pile of chow mein noodles, the sh shitty egg foo young. I love, I'll take a bad Chinese buffet over many uh, Western restaurants <laughs> any day of the week. So, in, in one of the, uh, you did a, was it pulled pork eggs benedict? Yes, with uh, green chili hollandaise. Right. One of the best things we all agreed we've had in a long time. Talk to me specifically about poaching an egg. I think yeah. some people have a handle on that. Uh, I think some people have seen Food Network videos on that, but I found it intriguing yeah. that you, you, A, showed it how you were doing, of course, like you do on your, all your videos, but then you were talking about like holding it in the refrigerator for next time or <laughs> saving something yeah, for later. Like, how the hell do you do that? No, it's, it's crazy. You would never think of making an egg today and serving it tomorrow. Never. A fried egg, a scrambled egg. Never. 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 There is something about a poached egg that lets it be made today and be served tomorrow in the best way possible. Are you watching yourself and, and, behind and, and you? What I what? Are you watching yourself behind yeah. you? No, I'm not watching. <laughs> it. I love that. I, I, I put that on just for your benefit. 
I love it. I'm glad I found it. I don't watch me. I do, aside from editing, watching myself while we edit a video, I will not watch me. Ever. I understand I that. I don't like to watch me. I get it. Yeah. Back to the poached eggs. You just muted yourself. Unmute. There you go. There you go. Uh, top of the top of the mic. Nope. Nope. Top of the microphone. There it is. There it is. You got it. I got it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So <laughs> there's this thing about poached eggs that brings a ridiculous amount of pressure with it. And here's the problem. Can you poach an egg nicely, perfectly, uh, yes, without yes. silicone cups? or yes. you in the water. Or like yes. a microwave thing in the water. Okay. Yep. But a lot of people can't. They're scared of it. And I would say, look, uh, can you ride a bike? And everybody goes, yes. I go, there was a time when you couldn't ride a bike. And the difference between then and now is this little thing called practice and experience. You do it a couple times, you get it figured out. Same thing with poached eggs. You don't need silicone cups. Some stupid ass microwave thing that goes in that gives you a dumb, perfectly uniform poached egg because that they're just not right. You need to learn how to do this. But so let's say you can make a poached egg. The second you determine it's perfect in the in the pot, you take it out, you put it into ice water, stops it cooking, and you just put that egg in the ice water in your fridge and you leave it to the next day or the next day after that. Hmm. Now. Here's the beautiful part of it. Let's say you're having f four people for brunch on a Sunday. Making poached eggs takes time. It also takes a toll on you because you want to get them right. And very sometimes they break. Sometimes you, you ruin it, right? So I say you do them the day before. You take your time. If you fuck up one, no problem. Throw it out. Make another one. Give yourself four or eight perfect poached eggs that are now in cold water in your fridge. Hmm. And when you need them, you've got your English muffin, if that's what you're using. You've got your ham, your Canadian bacon. You've got your hollandaise made. By the way, uh, you can go to thecookinguy.com and get a great simple blender hollandaise recipe, no fail. But now all you do when you need them is you take those poached eggs, you slip them into simmering water for one minute. Take them out, give them a quick dry on a towel, put them on top of the the, the Canadian bacon, add the hollandaise, and Bob's your uncle. They're done, and they're perfect, and you've not stood in the kitchen freaking out that you've got six good ones, you need two more, and you keep screwing them up. Uncle Joey's not going to get his, and he's really particular, because we all want that beautifully set white, but with the runny yolk. Mm-hmm. And you're keeping you them in this. the refrigerator in water. That's how you're keeping them. Yeah, cold water. Cold water. Exactly. All right. I'm telling you, it's the it's the world's best hack. It really is. But you got to learn how to make a poached egg. Come on, just stop using the 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 training wheels to yep. get yourself there. That's just ridiculous. Uh, Thirty seconds left. Do you have a mm. great Valentine's Day lead pipe lock for the get down? Um. Yeah, I, I'm always going to make it. I'm going to reverse sear a beautiful filet. Mm. I'm going to I'm going to buy. Sorry, I'm going to buy a package Bernay sauce. Yes, like Nor Nor makes it a it's really great. good. Uh, I have twenty Bernays packets sauce, in right? my closet right now. Exactly. Maybe a little extra salt because it probably needs that. But crab too. So oh. I cooked my filet. I take some crab that's already cooked. You can buy good pasteurized crab in a can in the refri refrigerator section of the store. You take your filet. You've got it perfectly cooked on the plate because you've reverse seared it. You put some crab on top, the bernays on top of that. And then, you know, a little parsley, a little chive, a few cracks of some fresh black pepper. You're getting laid, I think, no matter what. All right. Unless you're by yourself and then... You take then, you're, then it's a guarantee. It's so then it's guaranteed. Yeah, abso absolutely. It. Maybe you only have to go top sirloin instead of filet for that. You know, who are you impress? <laughs>
Hey, uh, Come you on. can check out treat Sam. Treat yourself the, better. Yes, of course. On that day, treat yourself. Uh, why not? It's a, thank a you. day for thank lovers you, or self-lovers or whatever right. you got. Of course. Sam, course. the cooking guy, is here, of course, on the first Tuesday of every month. You can get him over on YouTube. If you're not subscribed to him, go do that. And his website, thecookingguy.com. And don't forget the knives and some of the cool shirts that he's got as well. Sam, always appreciate the time. And we will see you in March. Have fun. Wow. Yes. All that time. All right, buddy. All right. There Be he good. is. Sam, the cooking guy, right there. Enjoying it as always. We have Laura Paul coming up. Talk about the Smithfield Grant. Does anybody else keep eight or ten poached eggs on the ready? I can tell you who's going to start doing that because myself and my middle daughter are huge poached egg fans. So we will be keeping them ongoing. Like my oldest and my wife are big uh, hard-boiled egg fans, and they'll keep you know, 8, 10, 12 at a time. We're going with the poached eggs. We're going to try that this weekend. Before we get to Laura, let me quickly talk to you about Big Papa Smokers, the one-stop online shop for all things barbecue. Curated selection by Big Papa, uh, by Sterling, Big Papa Ball himself. They have the seasonings and the rubs. Great flavors like Sweet Money, Cattle Prod, Cash Cow, all proven winners on the competition circuit and in backyards. If you want to try out a brand new barbecue sauce, if you're looking for something that's out of the norm or what's currently available, Granny's Barbecue Sauce, they own that. It's a traditional yet powerful flavor that will remind you of why you fell in love with barbecue in the first place. Outside of the premium selection of rubs and sauces, they're selling cookers and you know that. If you're looking for a versatile smoker that's easy to use, check out that Mac 2-Star General Pellet Cooker. Big Papa Smokers, the exclusive Mac dealer, even offering special packages. Not a fan of pellet smokers? All right. Check out that Old Hickory Ace BP as championed by Malcolm Reed in the first hour as well. It's the only charcoal smoker that Big Papa trusts on his competition trailer. If you're not sure of what grill you need, you really can't go wrong with anything over at BigPopSmokers.com. If you have any questions, call them, 877-828-0727. That's 877-828-0727. Again, shop the website, BigPopSmokers.com. That's B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A, Smokers.com. And we are back with Laura Paul from Smithfield right after this. Stick around. You're listening to the number one most downloaded barbecue and grilling podcast anywhere. The Barbecue Central Show. Celebrating over 10 years of prolific and unparalleled live fire barbecue and grilling talk. And yes, it's still being done from Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. As luck would have it, this portion of the show being brought to you by Smithfield. That's right. Head on over to smokinwithsmithfield.com to check out the Committed Cooks program. We're going to be talking about the grant program. And, of course, uh, smithfield.com through the grilling season. Because grilling season is every season. Or perhaps I should say every month is grilling season. Even here in the brutality of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio, smokingwithsmithfield.com is the place to go to check all that out. All right. Joining me now is friend of show, Laura Paul from Smithfield. Hey, Laura. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Greg? I am fabulous. Appreciate you making time for the show as always. And we have some. Big announcements to talk about, some other things to chat about as well. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get right to the grant program. Usually we like to tease a little bit to draw in, but I think it was announced well enough in advance. So uh, everybody that is going to be interested in hearing if they got the nod will be tuning in here uh, this evening. So uh, how do you... uh, It's a little different than it has been in years past, right? Because, you know, we were going to do one last year and... Of course, uh, COVID hit and a lot of contests took a dump, uh, a lot of those being ones that Smithfield Grant Program was a part of. So, you know, let's quickly review sure. back into 2020 and talk about, you know, where the expectation was and then how it actually ended up shaking out for you guys. 
Yeah, I mean, just as kind of a recap, the grant program is obviously awards barbecue competitions grant money to enhance their event, give back to the competition cook teams, and deepen that prize pool payout for uh, the top 10 and the top overall categories in the competition. Um, so for 2020, um, I believe we had about uh, 22 or 23 events that were chosen uh, back in uh, you know December of 2019. And uh, as the year went on, uh, a number of those events had to either cancel or reschedule. So uh, as the year went on, and I, I believe it was actually 18 events who were awarded grants in 2020 had to cancel or defer their event mm. um, to this year. Some events are even looking at pushing to 2022 um, so we decided that the right thing to do was honor those grant recipients if they decided to reschedule their event um, for this year. So we have 18 events that were 2020 recipients that we are honoring in 2021. Um, and we have 19 new events that we've added. Um, so we have a total of 37 wow. grant recipients this year. All right. So uh, how do you want to go about unveiling? Should we do the, the carryovers from last year and then we can announce the additional ones that are selected for 2021? Uh, I've got them laid out in order of date. Okay. So um, if we can just go go through that. I figured we'd start with, with the first event that's scheduled in March and wow. go through the whole list as one. Okay, let's do that. Go ahead. Okay, so our first grant recipient is uh, on March 26th, Barbecue Gives Back in Urbana, Virginia. Uh, second is on April 9th, Smoke in the Spring in Osage City, Kansas. Our third event is on April 10th, Carfest San Antonio Barbecue Cookoff in San Antonio, Texas. On April 23rd, we have Washmo Barbecue Bikes and Blues in Washington, Missouri. Our fifth event is on April 30th, Jiggy with the Piggy in Kannapolis, North Carolina. We have another event on April 30th, Masters in May in Bancroft, Wisconsin. Number seven on our list, May 8th, is Esperanza Bonanza in Marion, Arkansas. Number eight is May 15th, Twin Valley Fire and Smoke in Morgantown, Pennsylvania. On May 22nd, our ninth event is High on the Hog Festival in Winchester, Tennessee. Uh, we have two events on May 29th. The first is Red, White, and Barbecue in Westmont, Illinois. The second is Valley Veterans Barbecue Competition in Valley, Nebraska. Number 12 on June 5th is the original South Dakota Barbecue Championship in Huron, South Dakota. Number 13 is on June 18th, Almost Heaven Barbecue Bash in Roanoke, West Virginia. Number 14 on June 25th, Lake Merval Barbecue Cook-Off in Carthage, Texas. Number 15 on June 26th, Heritage Days Barbecue Showdown in Belvedere, Belvedere Illinois. We have two events on July 17th. First is Chillin' and Grillin' in the Glades in Wise, Virginia, and Cameron Elk's Double Header Cook-Off in Cameron, Missouri. On July 24th, we have Clayton Barbecue Cook-Off in Clayton, California. Um, another event on the 24th of July is Smokin' on Main, Code 3 Spices in Collinsville, Illinois. Two events on July 31st as well. July is a pretty busy month. Yep, Smoke and Saddle Barbecue in Dodge City, Kansas. And Smoke in the Grove Barbecue Festival in Spring Grove, Pennsylvania. On August 7th, we have our 22nd event, Lassen Annual Barbecue Cook-Off in Susanville, California. On August 20th, we have Smoke on the Bricks, Baldwin City, Kansas. On August 27th, we've got Death Door Barbecue in Washington Island, Wisconsin. Two events on August 28th, 
Hill City Wine, Brew, and Barbecue Fest in Rapid City, South Dakota, and New Holland Summer Fest in New Holland, Pennsylvania. Our 27th event is September 10th. It's River Fest in Decatur, Alabama. On September 11th, we've got Ribs, Rods, and Rock and Roll in Vermilion, South Dakota. On September 18th, the Tri-City Barbecue Fest in Denison, Iowa. And on October 9th, we've got our 30th event, Barbecue and Blues on the Levee in Helena, Arkansas. Number 31 on October 10th, All American Smokers in Bonifay, Florida. On October 15th, the Dave Psalm Barbecue Classic in Bancroft, Wisconsin. October 23rd, we've got Smoking for Garrett in Boonville, Indiana. In November, uh, November 6th, we've got two events, uh, Polar Pig Barbecue Cook-Off in Concord, North Carolina, and Saluting with Smoke in Yorkville, Illinois. Our 36th event is in November. On November 12th, Bands, Brews, and Barbecue in Port Royal, South Carolina. And last but certainly not least, on December 11th, 2021, the Briscoe Ranch Barbecue Cook-Off in Uvalde, Texas. Is that and enough that is for you? <laughs> Holy mo! Wow, you did it. 37, and you did it expertly, which is certainly no surprise. Laura Paul joining us here from Smithfield. All right, so let me uh, quickly go through here as I was feverishly taking notes. Uh, represented in these states, Florida, Indiana, South Carolina, West Virginia, California gets a pair, Alabama, Iowa, Virginia gets a pair, Kansas has three, Texas has three, Missouri has two, North Carolina has two, uh, Wisconsin has three, Arkansas has one, uh, two, Pennsylvania has three, Tennessee, Illinois has four, I believe, uh, Nebraska mm -hmm. and South Dakota has three. I mean, when you look at it, I mean, certainly some states had uh, a repeat or two, but that's uh, still, you know, as, yeah. as I had talked, you know, all the way back when, uh, you know, it was with Emily and we were originally talking about the grant program, there was a lot of talk about, well, how much of the country are you going to be hitting and are there going to be favorites and blah, blah, blah. And here you are really taking a huge swath of the country all the way from California to the New England area and down south and all the points in between. When you're looking at events to take on, what are the most crucial parts of your analysis? Like if I'm a guy that's going to be putting on a barbecue contest, what does Smithfield like to see in order to give myself the best shot at securing a Smithfield grant? Well, we, we normally like to see events that are a little bit established, so we, we don't normally support events in their first or second year. Um, obviously, we want to see that it's an event that's um, you know trying to be an annual tradition and will come back year, year after year. Um, we don't want to see other competitive sponsors of the event, obviously, um, but really, you know, we this year was almost a blessing as much trouble as 2020 caused everyone, um, you know, we were able to focus on choosing events this year that maybe we weren't able to support in the past. So there's a lot of new events that I think have been repeat um, applicants. And I really wanted to, to look at those events and say, okay, this is the year that we're going to be able to support them uh, because we're really broadening the number and, and we're bringing it almost up to 40 events where in the past yeah. we've done, you know, closer to 20 or 25. Um, this year we also took into consideration uh, whether an event had a backyard component, uh, which, you know, we, we really like to see. So the majority of our new events, uh, I believe 15 out of 18, have a, a backyard component as well. Laura Paul joining us here from Smithfield talking about the grant program recipients, and it was an extensive list, uh, 37 events, some carrying over from 2020, 18 of those, and then 19 new ones here in 2021 as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Committed Cooks program. By the way, uh, I will go ahead and post a graphic um, that I got uh, a little earlier on my social media. So if you're missing out on this or you hate the podcast or whatever the case is and you just want to look visually, <laughs> I'll go ahead and make sure that I post that on social media as well. Uh, the other component to this at smokingwithsmithfield.com 
has been the ever popular committed cooks program for a you know a small fee to cover shipping. Uh, you're getting a bunch of yep. really cool Smithfield swag. Yeah, um, so we actually have some spots available left for the Committed Cooks program for this year. I think we've just got just under 30 spots left out of a total of 300. Wow. So if anyone out there listening wants to sign up, they should definitely go to smokingwithsmithfield.com. Like you mentioned, it's, there's a small $25 registration fee, um, but that really covers the shipping on the really cool swag items that we send uh, everyone. So, you know, from wearables to, um, you know, cool different prizes and uh, chairs, tumblers, coolers, um, you know, you get some swag items that you can put on display while competing. And, you know, this is a, a good way for, you know, everyday cooks and, and people on the circuit to be unofficial ambassadors for the brand. So we, we really love everyone who signed up and shows Smithfield the love. Um, we've been known to show up at events throughout the year and give some, you know, surprise and delights out. So we love to see all the banners, the shirts, the aprons, um, all the love that, that these cooks give us. Uh, Laura, also you did for the first year, I think it was a, uh, kind of a, a, a name partnership with KCBS for their world championship. Uh, how do you think that that mm -hmm. went off as a first year event? And is that something you're going to be going with in year number two? Yeah, this is a great partnership. Obviously, uh, you know, I, I know Emily Detweiler very well. Um, we have a connection through Smithfield and uh, decided that it would be a really good opportunity for both of us to partner. So um, we actually just got the official recap of the 2020 event. Um, they, because KCBS combined their World Invitational, uh, which we are the presenting sponsor of, uh, along with their Team of the Year Awards and annual KCBS Banquet. So it was a really fun event, uh, socially distant and responsible uh, in Mayetta, Kansas last November. Um, and we did uh, announce at that banquet that we will be um, presenting be the presenting sponsor again in 2021. So we're really looking forward to that partnership. We'll be partnering with KCBS throughout the year, um, you know, on some other events as well as uh, on social media. So, you know, watch both of our handles at Smithfield Brand and KCBS uh, social media platforms, and we'll be sharing back and forth quite a bit. Lord, do you have a gut feeling, just your own speculation on how you think the first half of the year is actually going to come off from a competition perspective? Anything that you're hearing from any of the experts? You know, my hope is that we, you know, go off without a hitch. Uh, obviously, I'm uh, optimistic, but also realistic. And uh, I think the name of the game is flexibility. So... For going back to our grant program, if we have grant recipients that need to change the date, um, you know, we, we had that issue last year. We are 100% flexible, willing to work with, with all of these partners of ours and events uh, and grant recipients. So uh, we're flexible. We know that events and states are going with the flow, hoping for the best. But I really want to get out to some competitions this year. Um, I hope that we can, you know, continue our sponsorships of Memphis and May and the Royal and the Jack, um, just to name a, a few others. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I, I hope it goes smoothly. <laughs> you had mentioned a couple minutes ago about making a, a larger partnership or, or maybe some cross-promotion within KCBS. Do you think that competition barbecue as a scene might get some kind of renaissance either through the, you know, after the first half of this year or, or maybe even into next year as we look down the road, uh, perhaps something akin to what I refer to as the golden age of competition barbecue when you had pit masters on for, you know, 10 mm. or 11 seasons and everybody realized, hey, I don't have to be a world-class athlete to be a, a really good competitive barbecue cook and I can go up against the best at the same time. Do you see Smithfield being a part of this in some way, uh, let's say even five years from now? I think so. And, you know, a lot of people have had time to practice their skills at home, Greg. So I, I see some new pit masters coming out of the woodworks. Uh, you know, my husband loves to smoke. We've got two smokers at home. 
Uh, I think the backyard barbecuer has had a lot of time to hone their skills, and, and we'll be seeing some some new uh, pitmasters come out and, and you know challenge the competition. You know, for one of the longest periods of time that I can remember, my biggest bitch about competition barbecue is how the flavor profile seems to have stalled out. Everybody wants to copy everybody because everybody wants to do what's winning and it's gotten really expensive, yeah. obviously. So nobody wants to step outside of the box and potentially put themselves in a situation of just blowing off their feet, uh, just trying to be different. Do you think because of this situation that we have found ourselves in, that this might be an entryway into people showing a little bit more originality, number one, and then B or number two, the judges will be more open to judging more rewardingly uh, because of this whole thing? I hope so. Um, I think that that would be a great change to the circuit. Um, You're right. I mean, people cook to the region they're in or the judges that are there and and their preferences. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more virtual competitions and with that either public choice or, um, you know, we'll say the general public, uh, you know, sending in their own uh, cooks and recipes. So, um, I think we're going to see quite a few more virtual competitions, uh, like the barbecue battle, uh, giant barbecue battle did this year. That was a huge success. So I foresee a few more of those. And I think that'll push the envelope a little bit on, on how, um, you know, master series events are, are run. Perhaps that's just my personal thought. Does Smithfield have, uh, this is a, a- kind of an important question that I'm asking. Um, does Smithfield have people corporately that are monitoring competition forums and competition social media pages for, you know, for as nice as competition folks are or as we hear them to be or at least claim to be? I've seen a lot of them kind of eat their young, if you will, on social media forums and, and other message boards from time to time. So, in your opinion, do you think folks should be cognizant of how they're coming across on these kind of channels in order to to make sure that the whole industry is being shown in their best light so they can attract or continue to attract companies like Smithfield or, or you know, some, some bigger companies that are looking to invest into this kind of a industry? Well, if you're looking for, you know, corporate sponsorships or, or companies like Smithfield uh, to invest, I think public image is always important. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think people just need to be kind to each other. Um, everyone has their own opinion, and uh, you're, you're definitely welcome to that. Um, but that would be what I would say is, you know, I think there's an opportunity just in general for, for everyone to be more welcoming, opening. Um, I, I've definitely seen that on the circuit and uh, especially on, with the backyard side of it. Um, you know, we had a really great showing at the KCBS World Invitational and, you know, everyone was just so welcoming to those backyard teams. It was really wonderful to see. Uh, before I let you go, is there anything business wise before I ask the last question uh, that you want to talk about or that we haven't covered? Well, I will circle back to the grant program. I did want to make the point that this is our fifth year, our fifth fifth anniversary of the grant program. Um, To date, we've awarded uh, grants to 142 different events. So with 2021, that'll bring us up to about 180 events. And uh, with this year's investment, we'll be close to $600,000 in investment uh, in in competition barbecue through our grant program. You know, I think the most important thing to note, aside from the number, the sheer number of events that you've helped uh, deepen that prize pool, is, is that's what it is about. It's not a promoter sticking some cash in his pocket or, you know, somebody else making out with this money. This is being infused into the competition. This is going directly into the cook's pocket. It's a little bit more money. It's a little bit more incentive to keep these people coming back. I mean, this is really what the grant program is all about. Absolutely. Yep. 
All right, Laura. So last question before I let you go this evening. There's a big game coming up on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, and it's the Chiefs and it's Tampa Bay. I've asked everybody else this evening, and Tampa Bay is currently winning on the votes. But do you have a pick on who you think will take the championship? Well, you know, I grew up in Connecticut, so I'm a Giants fan. But if I have to pick between the two that are going to the Super Bowl, um, I will have to back Kansas City. Kansas City? All right. I backed Kansas City myself, so we're either in luck or we're both in danger because I backed Kansas City. <laughs> but they beat the Browns, so now I have to follow the team that beat my team into the Super Bowl. There you go. That's how it works, right? You're a Giants fan? Yeah, oh, yeah. just uh, with my Northeast upbringing. Yes, wow. I mean, that's been, uh, well, I mean, there's been some Super Bowls in there, but I had, what's your take on uh, Eli Manning? Is he a really good quarterback or did he have like flashes of brilliance with sustained mediocrity? I can't get a really good read on him. <laughs> uh, I like your latter uh, description, sustained moments of brilliance with some mediocrity, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, uh, we'll see how it goes from here. Uh, this is Laura Paul from Smithfield, smokingwithsmithfield.com, of course, if you want to sign up for that Committed Cooks program. And I will post the graphic of the 2021 grant recipients. Laura, appreciate you coming on and making this announcement here on this show. And as always, if you need to get anything out, hit me up and we'll have you on the show directly. Thanks so much for coming on tonight. Thank you so much, Greg. Have a good night. You got it. There she is, Laura Paul. From Smithfield, smokingwithsmithfield.com, of course. 36, 7, 37 events. 18 from last year, 19 new this year. Wow, that's a lot. I'll talk to you quickly about Pits and Spits before we wrap the show. Since 1983, Pits and Spits has been handcrafting smokers and grills in Houston, Texas. In that time, Pits and Spits establishing itself as the premier brand and high-quality offset smokers, and more recently, pellet cookers, right? Pits and Spits setting itself apart by using heavy 7 and 10-gauge stainless in every cooker, fully welded construction that you can feel when you use the unit, and a 304 stainless roll-top lid and front shelf on every single smoker. Why does that matter? Well, by using higher quality material, Pits and Spits smokers reach and maintain temperatures, allowing you to worry more about the meat than the heat. By providing fully welded smokers, you don't have to worry about grease or smoke leaking out of the barrel or the grill rattling apart as you move it through the backyard. And by using 304 stainless, you're getting an heirloom quality product you can pass down to your kids if you want, or you can get buried with it. Now, where some companies are focusing on being low-cost providers, Pits and Spits focuses on craftsmanship, and quality materials. Are there cheaper ways to make these things? Of course. But they don't like tack welds. They don't like crappy stainless or cheap electronics that you can't trust. Having in-house manufacturing gives them complete control of the whole design and standards process. Not something you're going to find anywhere else. Their steel suppliers supply materials to be used in some of the harshest environments, so you know they're going to perform wherever you are in this country. And their controllers are made right here in the States. They have unimpeded transparency into the program. Pits and Spits has a dealer network across the country. If there isn't one near you, give Koi a call at the shop and tell him I sent you 844-650-6250. That's 844-650-6250. Whether you're a backyard grill master looking to cook steaks for the fam or a competition team looking to cook 50 racks of ribs, Pits and Spits is a product for you. You can check them out on their website, pitsandspits.com, all spelled out, or check their Pits in the Wild across social media with their handle, at Pits and Spits, once again, all spelled out. Let's wrap this bad boy up. Stick around. We'll be right back. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpy. And this portion being brought to you by Vortic Watch Company, a small batch custom watch manufacturing and vintage restoration company located in northern Colorado. They take antique American pock watches and turn them into wristwatches. Their mission, preserve and enhance the legacy of manufacturing excellence in America. In order to do that, they combine traditional and cutting-edge technology to create 
quality, functional timepieces with exceptional value. Here's the coolest part. Each watch that Vortec makes, unique, one-of-a-kind piece. That's right. Vortec founded on the motto that America wasn't assembled, it was built. Check them out at VorticWatches.com. That's V-O-R-T-I-C, Vortec, VorticWatches.com. Thanks again to Laura Paul from Smithfield. Announcing the 2021 grant recipients. That's a lot. She plowed right through it. And again, while some states did get two or three, there was a pretty good, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 states represented throughout this great land of ours. So as she said, if you're a first year or even a second year comp, uh, competition, they might not give you initial consideration unless you're just banging it out of the park right out of the gate. But you got to be established, and then that money goes right into the overall prize pool. Fabulous. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here all the way back in the first hour. We talked with Malcolm Reed from How to Barbecue Right. Then we talked with Brad Stewart from Crisby, C R I S B E E dot org. You got great cast iron products to keep the cast iron in tip top shape and then the new product that has just recently been out the crispy wood so if you have knife wood handles or wood cutting boards that you've neglected you need to bring them back into shape crispy wood is the thing that you're going to need to get then in the second hour we spoke with sam the cooking guy the cooking is the website you can find them on youtube with three videos per week monday wednesday and friday we close it out with Laura Paul from Smithfield announcing the grand program, talking about the Committed Cooks program and a number of other topics as well to include their remaining as the name sponsor of the KCBS World Championships. The show goes up on podcast shortly in the first hour, Thursday, second hour, best of on Friday. Big show planned for you next Tuesday. Meathead is in, of course. And we're going to break format next Tuesday as one of my favorite podcasts slash pod documentaries called Relative Unknown. The star of that, Jackie Taylor, will make an appearance in the second hour. We'll talk to her uh, about her time here in Cleveland. Relative Unknown about her father being a very high-ranking member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club back in the 70s and 80s. So Relative Unknown is the name of the documentary podcast. You might want to check that out if you're into that kind of stuff. But the Jackie Taylor will be on the show in the second hour on uh, on Tuesday this coming. September 11, 2001. I will never forget until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. This is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. <laughs>